Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a first look at GNOME 40. Now, GNOME 40 is the first GNOME release in a long time that I've actually been excited about, mainly because it's a little new. GNOME 3.x-ish has all looked basically the same for the last, oh, I don't know, when whenever GNOME 3 came out, you know, it's looked this basically the same. This is the first time that it's actually been really refreshed to look at least a little bit different. So I'm going to take a look at it. We'll see how well, you know, it performs and stuff. Now, I should say that this is taking place in a virtual machine using GNOME boxes, which I'm not familiar with, and it's beta software. So we can expect there to be bugs, but we're getting pretty close to the release date, I think. Uh, so it's it, probably not going to be that buggy. But if we see anything, we don't want to judge it too harsh because, like I said, it's beta software. So let's go ahead and jump in, shall we? Alright, so this is GNOME OS, and specifically it's GNOME OS Nightly. And I have started this up before, so I actually had to go through and search for the tour thing, but um, I just thought we'd go ahead and go through the tour, because there is a new tour thing for GNOME 40, so we'll just go ahead and start it, shall we? So we'll get an overview, make your apps your own. This is the most worthless tour I've ever seen in my life. This isn't actually doing anything for the tour, this is just... It's a slideshow. Weird. I don't have a touchpad. All right. Uh, left, right workspaces. All right. Well, this is dumb. How do I close this? You can't close it. Okay. That's how you close it. All right. Well, we'll just do this the old fashioned way. So traditionally in GNOME, you press the super key, you get something cool. So this is the new activities workspace. And before, when you press the super key, you'd get your menu over here and you'd get your workspaces over here. But now we've changed to this more vertical view. This is somewhat similar to what elementary OS does, but really you don't get into the similarities there until you press the show applications button. And you'll actually see your workspaces up here. And one of the cool things that I've found is you can actually go through and drag these icons to open up apps if you wanted to. So let's just say you had you wanted to grab your system monitor to your second workspace. You could do that. Weirdly, it changes that workspace to workspace one instead of the second workspace. So if I moved, um, I don't know, um, the terminal to the second workspace, it'd still go to the first workspace, which is, again, very weird. Uh, I'm assuming that's a bug, but we'll see. Now, in terms of resources, I think what I'm going to do actually do is see if HTOP is installed because while I'm not going to judge this if it takes a lot of resources, because this is, like I said, beta software, I would like to at least, you know, know if it's taking a ton more resources than before. Fortunately, HTOP is not installed, so let's see if TOP is installed. TOP is here. Okay, so we have uh, 285 tasks, and we're using... Uh, I, I don't understand why it says 16 gigabytes here. Oh, it's that's the percentage, right? So it's using 16% of the 7 gigabytes that I gave it, which is, honestly, top is terrible. There's no, no reason why you should ever use top. H top is so much better. Anyways, uh, we can actually just do this. Cancel. We'll do this. Clear. And do free dash M. So it's using a little bit over a gigabyte of space. Now, like I said, I've used a couple programs here, so I've opened up the tour application and I've opened up the system monitor so it's possible that those things have created a whole bunch of extra processes in the background and that's the reason why it's so, so much more but that's a little bit higher than what I'd expect for GNOME but not honestly not too much higher I also gotta remember that this is GNOME OS so this isn't based on Ubuntu or anything this is um Actually, I'm not sure what GNOME OS is based on. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Fedora, though. But it, it doesn't really matter. So, this is the newest thing here. And we should also talk a little bit about some of the application. So, along with the new layout here, a lot of the GNOME apps have actually been updated as well. So, we can actually go through and see some of this stuff here. So apparently we we should notice rounded corners. Oh, that's the wrong one. 
So if we open up a, I don't know, files here or something, where's those fi the files? Wait a minute. It's, oh, it's probably in a folder. Okay, so interestingly enough, if you're... That can't be true, right? If the icon is saved to favorites, it's no longer in the list of applications. That That's new, right? That's not something that was there before. So if I move this down to the dock, yeah, it's no, it, it goes away from the list of applications. Okay, interesting. So let's go ahead and open up weather. Yeah, we can see rounded corners. So we will not notice rounded corners again on 40, including on the workspace switcher, which is going to be this here. These are all rounded corners, obviously. That's um, an interesting design, cho design choice. Other visual tweaks include larger scroll bars. So I don't know if we'll be able to see that somewhere. Maybe if we change to list view and make this really small. I don't see the bigger scroll bars. So we also have a couple of new icons, which is software and web. So this, the software store has a new icon. Interestingly enough, the web store is not actually working in GNOME OS. But again, I'm assuming that's a beta, a beta problem. Uh, the other one that has a new icon is GNOME Web, which is um, a browser that hardly anybody uses, I don't think. I'm not... If we look at the about web here, this is the version 40 beta. I don't know anybody who actually uses GNOME Web. To... If you use GNOME Web, leave a comment below. I'd like to talk to you because I want to know why. Uh, what, what What's good about it? Because maybe there's something good about it and I just don't know. So as we saw in the tour there, if you, uh, if you have a trackpad, you can use gestures in order to navigate between workspaces and the multitasking view. I have a mouse, so that's not something that I can actually try out. So a three-finger swipe left or right moves between workspaces, while a three-finger push up enters the overview, which is going to be this one here, this here. And if you keep pushing, it extends. So if you keep pushing with the three fingers, you'll get into the app drawer here. You can also do super alt and up in order to see the. So if we do um. Super Alt Up. That gets us to the overview mode and then again to open the app launcher. Okay. I don't know why it needs to be three key presses. That's really weird, but okay. All right, so Nautilus has also been updated. So it, you can sort files by creation date, which is apparently something you couldn't do before. You really you can support you can sort by creation date before weird uh more accurate file transfer and copy estimates so when you copy files between two folders it will show you how long it has to before it's done transferring and that's supposedly more accurate when trying to copy or move a file someplace with an existing file of the same name you now get an option to rename the file being moved so that's cool and there's also been an overhaul of the preferences panel. So you can actually search for specific settings. I don't see that ability to actually search for something though. So OMG Ubuntu is lying to me. Okay, so if we go to a picture here, we don't actually have any pictures. But supposedly, if you have a picture here and you right-click on it to uh, set it as wallpaper, you'll get a preview. And there's also an option now to right-click on an app binary and choose Run as Program. So you don't actually have to go through and change the program's permissions to make it executable. That's also cool. All right, so the uh, another one that has been updated is Weather. So we'll go ahead and type in... Uh, city here and let's see GNOME's weather tool is one of the best weather apps for Linux according to OMG Ubuntu I've never actually used it so I don't I don't know if that's true or not 
uh, and it's Joey. You're very your language is very uh, flowery here. <laughs> Supposedly the app has been totally revamped for GNOME 40 with striking new design that relays more forecast information than more clearly clearly than before. The hourly forecast and the general forecast. So we can do hourly and daily here, which is cool. As you can see, it's actually really nice outside right now for being March. It's a weather app. What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, um, apparently this is different before, but I've never used GNOME Weather before, so I have no clue of telling you whether or not that's uh, actually different than it was before. So, um, Maps has also been changed with a refreshing appearance with place bubbles. So if we go into Maps here, I don't know how well this will work on a virtual machine, but we'll actually go through and zoom in here whoa whoa that zoomed in really fast and go to the capital city of my home state supposedly if you find a place here you can click on it but maybe that only works for cities apparently not for every city they sh in OMG Ubuntu, they so show Seattle. Apparently, this has also been revamped to work well on mobile, so that's cool. Uh, GNOME Web, also known as Epiphany, they rebuilt the tab bar. Uh, I don't know. So if we press Control T, do we get another tab? Yeah, so this kind of looks like it fits more in style with the rest of GNOME 40 here. So there's also new features like unread indicators, proper pin tabs, so we could actually go through and pin this tab, which is really cool. That's something you can do in Firefox and Chrome and all those other ones, so that's neat that they brought that feature over. A working drag and drop and more. Finally, a note for fans of Google Auto suggests web can be configured to display search suggestions as you type. This is not enabled by default. Okay, so... Looks like it's actually is enabled by default. Preferences. Duck, duck, go by default, which is probably something that's always been there. So you get some mouse gestures. Switch immediately to new tab. Uh, global auto spelling, uh, spell checking, which is cool. Okay, I don't see the whole auto suggest thing, but I'm probably just missing it. color scheme. Oh, there's a dark thing. Nice. Anyways, built an ad blocker, which is also nice. So maybe, <laughs> maybe GNOME Web is not as horrible as I was expecting it to be. That's cool. Uh, from what I saw, the software center was actually not working for me. I'm not exactly sure why. Again, probably a beta problem. So we can't actually go through and see that, but some... There's a new featured app carousel that spotlights software. There's also a, a version history, so you can go through and see previous versions of software. But again, I can't show you that because that's not working. Why it's not working? Again, I'm assuming it's just because this is a beta. Um, let's go ahead and look at the settings, shall we? Because supposedly there's some new stuff here in the settings. Settings is right here. The Wi-Fi section has been revamped, which. I'm not actually going to see anything here about Wi-Fi, I don't think, because, oh, right here, because I don't actually have Wi-Fi on this system, you know, enabled, plus it's a virtual machine, so. Uh, an overall of, an overhaul of the keyboard shortcut settings, so keyboard is down here, and then keyboard shortcuts. Okay, this does look significantly different than what I remember it being. So it's more organized for one. That's kind of cool. You can also reset all, which is good. And apparently there's a refreshed about page. This looks exactly the same as it did before, but I'm assuming there's subtle differences. So that is basically GNOME 40. I was more happy about this before I looked at it. I thought that the changes would be a little bit more, I don't know. I'm not going to go through and say exciting, but more, I don't know, make it feel like it, it was really different. It just felt like GNOME to me, just with the dock in a different position. Now, 
maybe the feeling would be a little bit better if I had like a trackpad and was able to use those gestures because then you feel like you're moving around fluidly in the operating system or through the desktop environment. But for the most part, it just felt like GNOME. Now, I think that's probably what they were going for because most, if you ask around, you'll know that GNOME users are the people who hate change the most in Linux. They really truly hate change. And they showed this by creating the Mate desktop. Um, they wanted GNOME 2 to stay the same so badly they created their own, they forked it. So uh, it's the same thing with GNOME 3 fans. They don't like change at all. So uh, I'm assuming that the reason why they've gone through and made this feel basically like GNOME is because they wanted it to. So for those users, that's great. For me, who was hoping for something radically different, I'm a little disappointed, I have to say. But it's nice that it's a little, at least a little fresh coat of paint. It's a little different, and that's good. Um, I'll probably use this again on Fedora 34 when it comes out, you know, stably. And maybe that will take a little, you know, will make me like it a little bit more. Uh, but for now, I'm quite happy that I don't use GNOME. That's just, I mean, I'm always happy that I don't use GNOME. Plasma is where it's at. Anyways, thanks for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast, Facebook at the LinuxCast. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. And with that in mind, I would like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Zach, Marcus, American Camp. Thanks for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.